What is up, everybody? How you doing? It's it's the uh, the Donkey Jaw Projects show, DonkeyJawProjects.com. It's Marsh Makes Comics, <laughs> and I am Mr. Marshall Lee of DonkeyJawProjects.com. And it's been a while. It's been a while since since we got together and we did this. You know, it's 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 crazy, right? <laughs> and hopefully things go well here. Um, I got the microphone hooked up. Hopefully it sounds nice and and cool. And uh, hopefully the visuals are pretty good. Um, the camera's hooked up. So yeah, we're going to be talking today about um, injecting yourself into your comics, aka standing out in the comic industry or in the crowd of comics something like that it's around that type of topic and we'll just be hanging out doing some art doing some drawing showing off some stuff um i'm really happy to be back here um i've been wanting to come back for a while but uh been very very busy working on um coding and stuff learning how to do software programming program program engineering and all the there's like 10 different ways to to call it computer science <laughs> i don't know uh, i'm learning i'm learning the technologies <laughs> so yeah uh so what's up we got Devante edwards in the house hello thanks for coming by cb smallwood just coming in to say hi thanks for uh coming by you know if you're hanging out cool if not i get it but i appreciate you coming and saying hello cb smallwood rocks and we got uh benjamin lumpkin hello comic lovers <laughs> hello sir glad to see you here thank you for coming by and we got Didi here. What's up? Hi, Didi. <laughs> Glad to see you here. Of course, as always, very happy. Uh, and uh, if everybody doesn't know, Didi's got, in, unless it's changed, it's been a little while since I've tuned in because um, I've been, usually when it's, when Didi's doing her show, I'm doing my learning how to code or something like that. So, um, but uh, she has her shows on Monday and Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, at 8 a.m. in the morning, starting till about noonish. So uh, check her stuff out. She's got really cool. Um, she's got really cool like mixed media art things and crafts and all kinds of stuff going on, and it's a fun time. I like being there when I get a chance to. That's for sure. Drew, what is up? Yeah, Marsh, good to see you in a video again. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming by. And then we got uh, River F. Hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Marsh is back. Awesome. Yeah, what's up, Ralph? How you doing? Glad to see you in here. That's great to see you here. Um, we got Empire Empyrean Vol, also known as uh peter seckler another awesome dude i've been seeing your progress man you just keep putting out those pages i've never seen anybody put put out so many consistent comic book pages constantly like wow i hope everything's going good with you i hope uh you know if you're still doing the cubert stuff if hopefully that's going well i can see the progress in the art and just the fact that you're pumping out pages i freaking love it you're an inspiration man um dd yes it's the same for 13 years <laughs> i figured <laughs> yes good to see you as well thank you dd i i gotta tune in when i can actually kind of depends i've been going on walks lately so um in the morning before i kind of get into the schooling i might even be able to start tuning in a little bit more we shall see um depending on if the timing is right. I got to think about that one. <laughs> that would be really cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> who else is in here? Michael Hingley. What is up? 
evening marsh just dropping by to say hello as i have worked in the morning but we'll have we'll hang briefly hope you're well i'm doing well i'm doing well working well not well working on learning <laughs> pratham geglat what's up i probably said that really horribly i'm sorry um thanks for coming by Paul Pate in the house. Hi, Marsh. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Good to see you here, too. Yes, I have chickens. <laughs> I've got the chickens. So if if you follow my social media, there's not much to follow because I don't even go on social media too much these days. But actually, in the last couple of weeks, week, week and a half, more or less, I've been going back on the social medias a little bit just to seek some inspiration because i love you know instagram really is helpful for inspiration for me personally um and so i don't know things have gotten less hectic because i'm not doing college classes anymore i'm just working on the boot camp and i don't know for some reason there's 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 ways like that i've been sneaking in <laughs> <laughs> a little social media and i mean it's not like i'm constantly learning doing school all the time but you know it's summer starting about to be summer if not summer already this might be the first day i don't know i know it's coming up if it's not today um and things start to get a little busier during that time as well so um yeah i got chickens and we have uh so far gotten about a half a dozen eggs a little more than that so that's cool we got our first egg the other uh last week and we only had chickens for like two weeks and we already got our first egg and they're not they're they're um they're younger so like they're like five or five maybe six months old at this point um so it's just right on the brink of whether they would start making eggs or not um so we find we got some and uh looks like we're starting to get about three a day uh, we have six chickens, so potentially we could have about six eggs a day, depending on the season, because there is certain times in the year, in the winter, I think, um, where they don't lay eggs so much. But uh, I don't. I think that's even pretty brief. So we'll be more than you know. We'll be pretty egg rich soon. <laughs> um, but it's been fun. It's been. I've never had chickens before. Uh, Magda has, so you know she's got experience she kind of grew up on a farm and stuff uh when she was younger a bit so um she's got more experience than me so for me it's all new i had to uh learn how to deal with a rooster and and <laughs> what kind of craziness that brings uh they can be pretty pretty rowdy like you gotta kind of rein them in <laughs> but at the same time it's really helpful to have a rooster um because they kind of help you take care of the chickens which is cool or i should say the hens because a rooster is also chicken <laughs> i don't know if you knew that but <laughs> uh, let's see uh drew says how's school going yeah yeah um basically i'm i'm done with the the sem first semester of college that was only two classes that was relatively easy um, cause it just happened to be like two really easy classes and I'm just focusing on boot camp stuff right now. Uh, I went through the HTML stuff. I went through the CSS stuff and now I am in the midst of JavaScript and it's my first time learning programming because HTML and CSS are technically sort of not actually programming or coding as much as where JavaScript is where you really start to get into what programming is. And after that, from what I understand, like the other programming languages, and, and I've seen it actually a little bit, um, have a lot of similarities. You know, they at least have universal concepts um, that, you know, make it easier to kind of go back and forth between the code. Um, but there's there's so much to this. And, and just for you know, learning programming the first time, it is like a challenge, at least for me, like I'm getting the concepts, but learning how to put it all together, it takes, it takes time. It's something you kind of, you can work hard at, 
but it's hard to really rush it because your your brain just has to have the time to process and and figure out like it it feels like it feels like you have to learn things backwards and upside down and then it eventually turns right side up <laughs> if that makes any sense so it's good it's really good i love learning uh but it is a challenge that's for sure um let's see Benjamin's doing comic things, or are you asking if I'm doing comic things? Well, we'll we'll get into it. That's for sure. Um, hey, Marsh. Hello, everyone. What's up? Oh, oh, Barack. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna try because I know I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna mess up the name. But hello, thanks for coming by. Um, let's see. I should get back to making comics. To be honest, it's been a while since I've done anything. Uh, well, you know, same kind of here. I, I was about to, I was trying to do like hundred days of making comics and then, you know, I took on too much, <laughs> I think. So I, I lost, I lost focus on that for sure. Um, so we're getting back on the horse here, but, um, I'll get into a little bit more of the plans and such. Um, chickens, yes, chickens. <laughs> It's fun. Uh, let's see. Marsh has quit city life to raise chickens. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I never lived in the city though, but yeah, I am more rural these days and I'm cool. I, I like, I like that. Like I, I really enjoy, you know, I mean, we have houses very close to us, but we also have a lot of woods, you know, in our backyard and stuff and things like that. So, um, it's really, it's just got that laid back vibe. And I see that like the lights here on the microphone are going over the line a tiny bit, but I'm hoping that I'm not distorting. Let me know if the sound is not good. If it's good, cool. Awesome. Um, let's see. What is my coding plan games? Um, I just, I'm, I'm looking to change a, my career from what it was, which that's already done. <laughs> well, sort of, uh, the, the warehouse stuff. Cause I quit that and, and now I'm just focusing on school full time, but soon enough, I'm going to have to figure out how to get a job <laughs> and stuff. And, uh, so I, it's just uh, front end, uh, web development to start. That's, that's, I'm just going to get my foot in the door with that. Um, I have ideas for like apps and games and stuff, but, uh, mostly, mostly, and, and most importantly, um, it's all about just getting a job in that industry. Um, and, uh, there is like a lot of creativity to coding. Surprisingly, it's, it's, a ton, there's so much, I mean, there's literally creative art you can do with coding and, um, so I, I definitely, I already have explored that like a tiny bit, but in the future, I know I will, <laughs> I, I know I won't be able to help myself and I'll be, uh, exploring the creative avenues as well. So that's kind of the type of stuff I look forward to for sure. Um, uh, let's see what is up total excellence. Ichthy five. What is up? Thanks for coming by. And that avatar looks pretty rad. Um, total excellence. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I know how to do that, but <laughs> hey, it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's try to be excellent, right? How is it being a full time creator? <laughs> oh man, I'm not quite that man. I'm. I, I wish. <laughs> right now, at least I'm. I'm. I'm a part time creator. I mean, I have not let go of my creative, uh, efforts, you know, since I've started to learn code. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's definitely taken a, a backseat. <laughs> Focusing on coding is, is my main thing right now. Um, and that is creative again, but, um, it's not cr creative quite yet. I mean, I did make a website. If you go to, I think it's just Marshall, Oh, I, it's, I don't usually say my real last name here, but it doesn't really matter. Actually, I don't care. I used to say it. It's marshallcouture.com. Um, there's other 
odd reasons why I didn't say my last name. Not because I was like in any trouble, but just other people in my life wanted more privacy. Not, I don't really, it doesn't bother me, but, um, let's see. Yeah. It's just marshallcouture.com. <laughs> so if you look that up, you'll see, it's not a fully, there's, there's still some things that need to be fixed. And, but you could see like my first three, um, HTML and C and CSS projects. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I did those. They're, they're just clones of, uh, Airbnb Newsweek clone and Apple clone. And I, and also the wet that this actual website I created as well, the portfolio site. So, um, all those things for kind of little projects there that I've done so far. I mean, I've done other projects, but most of them are like, you know, you kind of follow along and, and everything. And right now I'm working on a JavaScript project, um, rock, paper, scissors <laughs> game, you know, that's just to learn and for practice, you know, so um our um ralph says did you do that amazing junji ito inspired art <laughs> this is just you know junji ito's book here <laughs> i haven't done any anything specifically inspired by by junji ito but i um this is the first book i've gotten from junji ito and I've only read the first story and I'm halfway through the second story. Um, there's, you know, something like nine stories in here or something. And uh, I'm just excited because I've been wanting to dig into Jinji Ito's stuff for a while. Um, and it's like, if you don't know, it's manga, it's horror manga and stuff. Um, and this person, Jinji Ito, I don't even know. I think it's a guy, right? Um, I don't know, but they, they do horror stuff more often than not. And they have really cool art and, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. They just do kind of creepy horror stuff. And, um, I'm looking forward to, I want to get the, the, um, spiral. There's a book called spiral, I guess. And, and this per, Jinji Ito's got like lots of books. It's been on my radar for a long time. Um, so I want to check out a bunch of them. But I started with this because it's a bunch of short stories. I figure it's also learning. You know, I, I love seeing short stories because I want to make some short stories and stuff. Um, well, I've only mostly made short stories really um, with comics, but. I'd like to uh, do more and learn how to do them better. Um, so, you know, this is one of the masters at, at horror short stories and manga. So, yeah, I was I finally got this this weekend, actually. Um, and so this is my first venture into Junji Ito. I've also been uh, manga is like when it comes to reading comics, manga is my choice generally because um, these days because manga and, and it, that's new, relatively new for me because I'm, um, you know, I'm, I've primarily read, you know, typical like American comics and stuff. Um, everybody kind of knows what <laughs> I've talked about my influences a lot. I'll talk about it more today too, but, um, you know, manga is something that I've always, is always been kind of on the ed, on the peripheral for me. And I've looked into it at times, but now I'm like really kind of into it. So um, I'm trying to think of the names. Do, do, doro, do, doro, 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 I don't know. That's one of them that I really dig lately. And um, there's another one. Uh, uh, there's another one by the same creator um, that's going on right now. Doro, Horo, Doro is, is a... Uh, finished it's completed um and that is like really cool because i think i've shown the book here but there's like i got this like art of that book and it's really cool because that person does um a lot of uh mixed media like for their covers and some some of their pages and stuff too so it's really neat um but yeah just wanted to kind of show that so it's, it's cool you brought that up um, something I'm interested in. I'm looking forward to reading more of, um, I sound good. Thank you. Okay, cool. That's good to hear. Uh, let's see. Um, 
doesn't sound overdriven. Okay, great. Uh, what coding language? Yeah, I, I kind of went into that. So it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript so far. And then um, pretty much going to just be diving deep into uh, React and Ruby on Rails, which I think I, I don't know, barely know what those are yet. I think one of them is a framework for JavaScript and I don't know what the other one is. <laughs> I'm still learning, you know, <laughs> I'm a student. Um, so, uh, and then I'm also, I'm kind of dipping my toes into um, C and, and Python as well. Um, but that the extra stuff will come later. I just really want to dig into JavaScript and j dig into just uh, programming in general um, so I can uh, really understand this stuff and, and be able to do a good job as a career, you know? Um, so where are you taking coding classes? I tried free code camp. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people say free code camp is great. You know, it's, it's definitely a, a place where you can um, obviously learn for free. And uh, I've I've played I've gone there too I've done I've done a bunch of the free ones before, um, but I never stuck with it because you know when I have extra time I want to do my creative stuff, and I'm it's hard to even do that because I was tired after my you know physical labor job, and uh, and it's just hard to make myself focus on coding. That's why I quit my job so I could focus on it for a while and really put everything I can into it. Um, so I did end up paying for a boot camp, but it's it's a it's called um, Alt Academy, and um, it's it's like one of the cheaper ones you can find. But it, it's ranked it was ranked high in like an article I read on Forbes. Um, so I checked it out. Seemed like a good fit for me. Um, I can go at my own pace, um, which means I can go faster or slower, obviously. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it gives you the, the fundamental things you need to know to get a job, you know, get a job. So I'm just kind of, I'm going with that, you know, but I, I also have taken so many tutorials on YouTube and other places and, and I dig into any and every website I can to learn more about code. Um, because it takes more than just one little boot camp, kind of like they teach you everything you need to know in the boot camp, but sometimes it's it helps to like hear it from different angles and stuff and different people. So yeah, I'm I'm learning a lot there. Um, it's it's pretty good. Uh, Cirque works. What's up, Scott? Good to see you streaming again. All the best to you in your new endeavors. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And same to you, sir. <laughs> Scott has got obviously. If you don't know, if you don't know, Cirque works. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's he's like the comic book. I don't know. In my mind, he's like one of the kings of the YouTube comic book world. You know, um, he's got a lot of great videos, a lot of great resources for people. You definitely got to check out Cirque Works um, YouTube channel, and I think it's CirqueWorks.com, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, lots of great stuff there. If you want to learn about making comics, I mean, <laughs> he's he, he's got a video on probably every topic. Um, he's even got a class and stuff. So that goes through it like one bit at a time, I think. Right. So, yeah, good stuff. Check out CircWorks stuff for sure. And he makes really cool comics about zombies <laughs> kids and kids. <laughs> so you got to check that out and other things. And we got Arthur here. Hey, Marsh, long time. It's good seeing you again. Just wondering if you have a Discord. I had a Discord um, called the AAA Creators. And I, I've since let the um, moderators take it over because I just wasn't paying enough attention to it, to be honest. Um, and really, that's that's the main thing. And they were just they're really doing a great job there. And, and, and it really became more their, um, their discord than mine. So if you want to try to search for it somehow, um, you could connect with, uh, Peter, um, Empyrean Vol. He's in the comments. I don't know if he's still here, but if you can find him, he'll be able to 
probably help you if i don't know if they're trying to add more people or what but it's a, it's a great place there's they're always like helping people to make comics and stuff and i've made multiple comics because of peter and and um shell presto and and their like involvement they do these anthologies that you can kind of be a part of and everything and here's one of them here's the the one the last one i did i was in um, I just happen to have this <laughs> here because I was looking at it today. I, actually, I used it for the thumbnail because my comic is in here. The last comic I, I finished. Well, that's not true. But the last the last multi-page comic I finished <laughs> so far. Um, but yeah, this is uh, The Commute by Marshall Lee. And actually, Peter uh, Seckler helped me kind of come up with the idea for this because I was just coming back to comics. Let me throw this... Uh, take this down so but this is the comic i made um the most recent kind of little story mini story for just a four page story or no four five six no four four pages yeah four page story and a lot of people have made comics through this as well and and yeah cool little anthology and they just seem to keep going i think they're still going you know so uh it's a great place. I definitely recommend AAA. Here's Peter's work. Um, AAA community. Of course, uh, once again, Empyrean Vol, Vol. You'll see him in the comments probably if you want to connect. You can do that. And a bunch of people who frequent the show have done comics in these. And it's really cool. So, yeah. Really cool stuff. Uh, let's see. And there's a lot of good comic discords out there probably sir probably scott circlin has one i'm sure um i think some of the members of um of my discord ended up creating their own discord so yeah once in a while i pop in there you know i, I popped in there to to let them know i have a new video coming up today so that was <laughs> funny kind of that i just happened to be in there for that but um drew says i wish you all the best um always have you in my prayers i really appreciate that man i will take all the prayers i can get i got i got needs i got things <laughs> concerns uh i love god and jesus is my savior for sure and um you know <laughs> i can always use all the prayers i can get and you know what since you're praying for me i'll do my best to remember tomorrow when i get up in the morning and do my little devotion to pray for you as well <laughs> so thank you uh let's see what else um ichthy5 yo what's up oh he's talking to circworks cool all right awesome um let's see what else thank you marsh i commission eddie nunez from his last kickstarter i scanned and colored over it Oh, you did the coloring for that? Wow. That's some really nice coloring. And that's cool. Eddie Nunez. Wow. That's really neat. Um, awesome. <laughs> wow. Great colors. I mean, just from that, from what I can tell, it looks like it's got a slightly um, uh, kind of Simon Bisley type vibe, which I freaking love. So nice work. Carlos, what is up? Wow. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see what else do we got um so i'm going to get into the topic of um kind of standing out in comics and uh i have other things we could talk about um let's see i was working on an album um so that was kind of cool but uh what's going to happen is i'm going to just release some of the music from that because i don't think it's it's really gelling into a full album um and it's just kind of like i don't know some weird beats edm hip-hop type of thing <laughs> just making beats and and experimenting and i've been learning um ableton uh because i've i've used a lot of different you know software to make music in the past but i i stepped away from doing that so much and uh but i've been curious about ableton for a long time and i finally kind of dug deep into it you know when i'm taking my breaks for um from coding uh 
I usually jump in there and try to work on music, but you know, I'm at a place where I'm like, well, okay, I've done what I can there for now. I'm going to, I'm not taking a break from music, but I'm going to get back to my YouTube. I've been really missing doing this YouTube channel and doing, um, comics, just making comics, you know, and, um, I don't know. I don't have a plan, you know, when it comes to comics or YouTube, but I guess I'm going to try to do this at least weekly. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. Cause I, I miss being here and, uh, it's just something that actually, to be honest, hanging out with you guys is, is actually hell. I feel like healthy for me, you know, and, and I, I'm glad you guys dig it. Um, and it's just, it's just nice to connect really. It's just like a healthy, cool, fun thing. So yeah, music is going to be coming soon, which, you know, I know this is channel isn't really focused on music or anything, but, uh, uh, you know, I'll be posting it on my various social medias, most likely Instagram, which is Marsh makes comics and Facebook is, I don't really do Facebook like as a promotional thing. Exactly. It's just, I'll post stuff there just cause there happens to be people on the Facebook. Sometimes I think, I'm Marshall Lee on Facebook, um, Twitter too. I don't really go on there, but I post on there when I post something, I'll post there too. Really it's Instagram and YouTube is, is kind of my deal. So, um, find, find out about my stuff here. I'll put it in. I, I do. I also post stuff. Um, when I, whenever I do post stuff, I, I tend to post some of it in, um, in the YouTube, uh, I don't know, those posts you can do. I forget what they call it, the community posts or whatever. So you can find it there. But Instagram is probably the best place to find stuff about my music if you're interested in that. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? We talked about the chickens. Um, and uh, I don't know. Apple Vision came out yesterday. That was kind of interesting. Anybody look into that? <laughs> uh River says he's hopping off. Um, just wanted to chill for a bit and say hello. Oh, thanks for stopping in. It's great, great to see you here. Raymond Carver Carver is one of the masters of the short story, not to be confused with Shan Chandler. Not comics, but good short tales about the everyday, yet kind of pensive and thoughtful recommend. Okay, cool. Nice, Mike. Thanks. Michael, I should say. <laughs> if you wrote it out, you probably want it to be called Michael. <laughs> Short dis detective stories as well. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, let's see what else we got. Do 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 do. Nathan, what's up? How you doing, man? Hope you're doing well. I've been thinking about you. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know. I just love your art, and it's it's uh. We, we haven't chatted in a while, so it's, uh, yeah, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, let's see. Yes, yes. I always try to shout out my friends when they're around and, and point people in their direction because why not? <laughs> and, yeah, we've done a couple collaborations um, on our channel, too, which is really cool, me and Cirque, so that's been fun. Whoops. <clears throat> um let's see all right cool so i am pretty much caught up oh what's up nate um the other comic guy miss you too marsh ah thanks i appreciate it all right so um oh cool yeah doing well miss you buddy all right, all right cool awesome glad to see you here sir so what else have i been doing i, I bet i have been cracking open the sketchbook in the last week or so not much. This is about the amount of it right here. <laughs> oh, let me take the thingy off. Um, you know, I was drawing from, uh, it just happened to be on the top of a pile, you know, some old Kirby Fantastic Four stuff. So, you know, just kind of find an image I like and copy it. Just enjoying the the act of just drawing and and doodling, you know. So, and then this is just like the plant that's right in front of me, <laughs> and a little bit of the back scenery. Um, drawing the mundane, 
and uh, just trying to enjoy the process of making art and sketching. Um, so, yeah, um, I got some notes here, and we'll talk about a little topic here. And then, uh, you know, if anybody has any other thoughts, questions, whatever you want to talk about, I'm always down. Uh, don't know how long this video will be, but it's already 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so probably an hour and a half ish is my guess. Um, and then I'll get some food and have some dinner. That'll be nice. Um, so yeah, uh, trying to pick my, my poison here. I've been drawing. I usually a lot of times draw with just like a, a big pen or something. And that's probably what I should do now. Um, because when you're on screen, especially when you, don't have like the best setup like me it's hard to see but i don't know i've been kind of wanting to draw a little bit more in pencil it's been a long time since i've really spent some time in pencil um so i don't know we'll see i don't even know what i'm gonna draw you know if anybody has any requests maybe i could try <laughs> maybe i'll draw something from this shiver book uh, so let's see. I don't know. The thing is with, with this is until it gets into the gruesome horror parts, it's like, it's very plain drawing generally. Um, but I need to learn how to do that more too. Um, so maybe I should do some of that too. Um, and I don't draw in a manga style generally. So, um, also, keeping this book open is going to be uh, an interesting task. <laughs> uh, I have so many things. My studio, I don't know about you guys, but my studio is a mess. I can use music gear to op keep a comic book open. <laughs> Actually, that's the thing, too, is... I could bend the cover because I don't care if this is in good condition or not necessarily. So if I bend it back, some people are probably like, oh my gosh, don't ruin the book. But uh, and I'm not like precious about stuff like that. I'm not even precious about regular comics, let alone manga digest type comics and stuff. So, um, <clears throat> so um, let's see. DD says, looks good, Marsh. Thanks. Um, Shiver book or the invisible woman from that Kirby book. Yeah, I mean, there you go. <laughs> well, look, I did it. I drew the invisible woman right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, so I'll just, you know, mess around with whatever I see here and, and uh, talk about a little bit of a topic. So and hopefully the mic it's hard to have have like this mic in front of me <laughs> and draw at the same time <laughs> so this is going to be interesting because i'm not really used to that i usually so many times i've done these streams without like a, a real mic in front of me but i want to use it my mom bought it for me for christmas and it's freaking a nice mic and hopefully it sounds better and uh yeah so we'll see so i'll just draw some some pictures some pictures and stuff um so here we go and try to start with the gesture i gotta always remember to take my own advice start with the gesture marsh and uh <laughs> not that there's a lot of gesture here but there's enough to where you want to get it right so um so we got this girl kind of sitting and looking up leaning back on something I don't know who she is. I haven't read this story yet. Um, but yeah, standing out in the comic world in, in comics or really, the, I mean, this is universal too. It could be in like um, in any, you know, anything you want to stand out in. I mean, I could probably take this advice for, for coding and stuff too. Um, so if you're not a comic maker, and I know that's what my channel is about. And so you probably are a comic maker or interested at least. Um, you know, this, but if you're not, you know, if you want to kind of stand out, there might be some, some things here that are helpful. Um, 
Now, the thing is, is that the idea of standing out to me was more appealing when I was younger. Now I, I don't care as much, to be honest. Um, so it's kind of funny that I'm even talking about that, but it kind of makes sense. It's, and, and I'm saying, stand, I should say, what I should say is injecting yourself into comics because that's what I titled this this thing. <laughs> so um, oh, I got to remember too. One thing with, with women, like trying to draw women, is you got to remember to not make the shoulders broad. And, and cert, certain proportions are just different. Like the neck should be kind of smaller. And, uh, and also girls don't have ears. <laughs> That's one thing I've learned about drawing girls. Um, <laughs> no, the thing is, is like more often than not, if you look at like a hundred pictures of women, more often than not, their ears are hidden by their hair. <laughs> so, or some kind of something like that they're wearing or whatever. So girls don't have ears. <laughs> of course, it happens to be in this picture, this girl definitely has ears because she's got a hair... Uh, hair tie or a ribbon around her head or something so um so really the the i i kind of am saying standing out in comics because i think that's the more that's the thing that maybe you guys might be more interested in than than the topic i'm i'm really talking about <laughs> um but it, it's it's so much related and, and it is something I was thinking about as I was thinking about the topic of, of that I wanted to talk about today. And, um, you know, the thing is, is again, I don't, when I was younger, like I, I, and I'll say the same thing that I've said a million times, like, you know, I started out wanting to know, <laughs> loving like the guys who created like image comics before image comics came along, you know, but just, you know, I, I, I found X-Force number one, you know, and I was like, this is cool. I love this. And I was like right at the right age to to be interested and enjoy that kind of, you know, comic book. And then I saw like Spider-Mans and, and, and different, you know, X-Men books, the Jim Lee and, and Todd McFarlane and Eric Larson. And, and I'm seeing all this art and I'm like, this, this is fun. This is cool. I enjoy this. Like, this is something, you know, I, and I all already was an artist, you know, like I was always somebody who wanted to be creative and tried to do whatever I could to draw things. And, and I'd, I've pretty much always my whole life been an artist, been some, or been somebody who's been interested in the arts. So, um, even from very, very, very young. Um, so, you know, as I, I, I decide, I realized during that time that I'm like, I, I want to, I, like this comics thing, this was more when I was in high school, like, this, I, I want to do this for, for a living. Like this looks, if there's a, cause you're, you know, your, your parents or uncle or whatever aunts, you know, they, they're always the, one of the big questions that they ask kids generally is like, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know? <laughs> and you know, I wanted to be a fireman, typical stuff, fireman, like all, all the things that kids originally want to do before they have any ideas about the world, you know? And then, um, and then, you know, but then it dawned on me, oh, people, somebody made this comic, like, <laughs> so like, that's a job. <laughs> I want to do that, you know, and partially naive, not realizing even that, that art is, is not an easy job. Any kind of creative thing is not necessarily the easiest thing to, to make a living at it's possible for sure. But you know, at that time I'm just like, Oh, I'm going to be a comic book artist, you know? <clears throat> so anyways, um, during that time in high school and, and stuff, I'm like, I'm also into making music. I got into hip hop and was writing rhymes and making beats and stuff as I had the ability and chance to have, you know, access to equipment once in a while, um, things like that. And, uh, oh, my stomach's growling. Um, <laughs> it, it, uh, so I got into that and, 
you know, I just had a lot of ambition at that time. That's also the time I, I came to know the Lord and everything. And, and um, you know, my my journey in faith started then as well. So a lot of big, passionate things happening all at once. Um, and if, if that's not enough, like if just being a teenager isn't enough, like <laughs> I think most teenagers are, you know, have a lot of ambition or a lot of energy for whatever it is they're into or not into, you know, like they, they put the, the, they tend to have like a lot of energy to go towards that kind of stuff. So, um, and I was no different. <clears throat> so the idea of like standing out as a, as a comic book creator, you know, that's definitely something I thought about then. And I wanted to make a career in this stuff, you know, pretty much my whole life. I was like, yeah, I, I'm that serious about it. Um, so of course to, to, as I learned how hard it is to kind of make a living doing stuff like this, I'm like, Oh, well, I got to stand out. And I start getting concerned. Like, is this something I even have a chance at, you know? Um, and, um, back then, you know, the internet was just kind of starting. And so like, it's not like I had a, as much resources as, as people do now, you know, I didn't have a Cirque works, you know, or a Marsh Makes Art or a D.D. Willingham YouTube channel to go to and learn about art and cool things. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's it anything and everything I could think of that could point me to some kind of career and things I loved, I was interested in. Um, so anyways, just, I mean, I've kind of said this story a million times, but uh, so I'll probably, I'll try to keep it brief here. Cause there's the, the point I'm really trying to make is like the, I, the idea and thought of standing out in the comic world was like, Oh, a big mountain mountain to climb. And also like, how do I even do that whenever I do get to the point where I can, you know, make comics or, you know, do something about it. <clears throat> so I thought more about that when I was younger. Now I've kind of moved to a different stage in life, that's for sure, where I'm not really focusing on that. And and if a career happens, you know, that would be really cool. Or if it's even just like turns into some kind of side hustle. But I've learned that the thing is, is I love doing this stuff and I don't really want it to turn into, and, and it has been in the past, something that like, um, you know, has put pressure that that idea of putting and making it into a career has become a bit of a pressure that I think is a detriment to the actual creativity. So you know, I've, I've changed some of my ways of thinking on it. You know, I'm not giving up on, on the idea, you know, but at the same time, I've realized why, why I love this stuff so much to the point of, I'm actually kind of okay. If it just ends up being a, a really overgrown hobby, you know, because the point is, is kind of to enjoy it. And, um, and, and we live in a day and age where I can at least do something like have my YouTube channel or, you know, put out comics on an independent level without too much risk. You know, that wasn't a thing that existed so much before it, it did exist, but it was not as easy. Um, and now it's, it's kind of much more easy. So, um, so anyways, the thing is, is, um, I'm trying to think of like what I am into now. So, so this is the thing is I've learned in the past few years about like, I, I started getting into the modular, you know, your rack modular music stuff, which was more experimental. And I've gone through some, some tough times and, and I just really began to use my art more as a place to experiment. Um, and more as a place to explore and, and enjoy, just enjoy the process of making it and sometimes putting some stuff out along the way. 
and I've just found so much yet like I don't know just so much more in that where when, when I try to add the pressure to it that I've had in the past it's like it's kind of counter it, it, it doesn't help you know it, it harms and and it's become like almost like a therapeutic thing and I kind of want it to stay that way I'd rather not sacrifice the therapy side of it for um some kind of career or something um so the thing is is that's why i'm talking wanted to talk about injecting yourself into comics is is i feel like i've slowed down a lot like um when it comes to this stuff and i want to be consistent like actually dd is somebody i think about a lot um because you know she even mentioned here like she's been doing the you, the streams it was first you know you know it wasn't first on youtube i think it was um i can't think of the names of the sites but it was somewhere else um and then it turned into a youtube thing too and uh and she's been doing that for 13 years consistently uh and i um I kind of like that idea. Like I like the idea of just coming in here, hanging out with my friends and enjoying making some stuff once in a while. I'll have something to sell maybe um, just cause like, you know, I'm making stuff and if people want to read it, then they can buy it. It's like just offering the opportunity to check out some stuff I'm making. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll turn into more than that eventually, but it's not really my focus. But the point is, is, you know, I'm thinking about all this like kind of experimental stuff that I'm doing. So what I end up, what I really like doing now with art is, is like this mixed media type of stuff, or like I've gotten into like, um, collage art and scanner art, like stuff like punk rock stuff. Um, just not, not the actual punk rock. I mean, I like punk rock music and stuff, but like, what I really mean is like the aesthetic of it, like the the attitude and the collage and the, I don't know, the, the rough kind of styles and stuff that, that speaks to, to me um, and the experimental and exploratory nature of it. Um, and, and not just punk rock, but any kind of collage type of art has been interesting to me. Um, and again, just another way where <laughs> Dee Dee's, why I like really like, you know, DD streams and stuff. Cause she does a lot of that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, so I've played around with it a bit and I've done like digital collage stuff. And, um, and I also like what I'm doing right now that there's like two different things that I really derive a lot of joy out of when it comes to doing visual creative things and those two things are like that kind of abstract um exploratory experimental mixed media type of stuff whatever that turns into and just observational drawing observational drawing i i i just i could sit here and draw like if if people let me i could sit here and draw a lot for a long time um because it's just kind of, again, meditational. I feel like I'm learning something, um, when I'm doing this and, um, getting better at, at what I do. And, and that's not even the goal even anymore. Like it's not, it's, it's actually just more therapeutic to just sit here and enjoy the time drawing, even if I'm hanging out, talking to you guys, or sometimes I'm on like, um, you know, somebody mentioned discord earlier, like there's some discords that, that I've been a part of at times and, and, um, you know, just hanging out and chatting with some friends, you know, that's fun too. And I usually get more done when I'm doing that. And I really enjoy making comics too, like, just like taking the time. But in the past with the comics, I've been kind of rushing it more than I'd like to. And, and that I think is like, like I'm moving into a place where it's like, I want the next type of stuff I make to be stuff I really put everything into 
and and focus on on making it like really good whereas i feel like the comics i've made up until now have been almost like practice but i don't feel like i put myself into it like i don't feel like i put i mean i do but i don't like like it doesn't feel like there's much of a style there. I know people have told me like, Oh, I can tell your style and stuff when I see it. And I, and I get that because I feel the same way when I see other people's artwork that I know, like friends and stuff. Um, so it's just inherently there, but there's more that I want to do. Like when I look at my comics I've made, they, they almost look like thumbnails to me almost like it's like, I feel like if I if I just wasn't in a rush and took more time to to kind of really work on the stories, work on um you know, just putting myself into it, putting the things I like. Like I love observational drawing and I love um mixed media art and that's not really too present in my comics yet. But like it doesn't it could be. Like there are artists out there that that uh that do that sort of thing so that's one of the first kind of points i wanted to make is influence and and that's like an obvious kind of thing but like i feel like um you know if you're trying to stand out in comics one of the the first well first of all if you're trying to stand out in comics the the the, the problem is is um, looking around, and, and I did this, you know, recently, uh, well, even today, um, a little bit, when I woke up, I was thinking, like, <clears throat> well, I was just looking at, like, Spider-Man, because, like, I just saw the the new Spider-Man movie, and uh, I, I have some opinions about that. It was really good, um, <laughs> but there's one part, one, there's three words I didn't like in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good sort of <laughs> anyways um and i don't want to spoil anything or anything but um so but one thing i really liked and it was actually like spider punk or whatever i i didn't even i don't know if i even knew that was an actual character but basically this punk rock version of spider-man and i love how they illustrated him and stuff and it was like with this like collage rough kind of crazy style and, um, you know, and I was looking at other artwork just because I was there and, and it's like that compare and despair type of thing where it's like, oh my gosh, like even, even after the, even the, the spider verse movie or whatever, like they're doing a lot of things that I've had thoughts of doing similar things, but they did it like way better than I ever would have been able to do it. So there's like this part of me that's like, oh man, like. Uh, how am I going to stand out? There's already people doing amazing things that I, I'll never get to that level, you know, um, because I'm, I'm just not focused anymore on this idea of like being like an amazing artist. I'm just focused on enjoying my art, you know? So like, and I, I, I bet other people feel that way too. Like you look out there and there's, there's just so like, in my opinion, there is a surplus of really good artists out there, you know? And so it's really, if you're really trying to do something like it's really hard to stand out. Um, but I still think it's possible. And, and that's kind of the, the process of thought I went through today as I was thinking of stuff. I'm like, well, what are the things I'm really into that are different than other, other people? And those are like, there aren't really a lot of people, you know, putting kind of collage type of work into their comics. And there's definitely people who, who utilize, you know, observational drawing and stuff, but there's a, a few ways I've seen people do it. That isn't common that maybe would be more along the lines of the ways I'd like to do it. Um, so I don't know. I'm not saying I'm, my, my comics are going to look like observational drawings or anything. Cause I actually also like to do like cartoony styles and stuff. And I just don't know if I'll go quite that route. But there's kind of a, a mix between those two styles that can be really interesting to me. So again, influences. So for me, some of my favorite, if I think of like what's the most influential type of comics to like artists to me, 
like I, again i've mentioned the image guys a million times um so they're definitely right up there um in my top five would you know probably be you know eric larson rob liefeld um todd mcfarlane and yeah i know a lot of people say some of those guys aren't so great but i like them so it just is what it is um and um an, but probably maybe right at the top is um sam keith i've just he might be one of my biggest biggest influences and i don't talk about him as much but he's somebody who brings in you know the collage stuff the mixed media stuff and i've always been excited about that kind of thing that he does and also bill sinkevich which he's a very celebrated artist um and he he's actually one of the both both of those two people they use a lot of mixed media and um and also they use a lot of observational techniques and stuff um so and and there's many others and and i'd also make a, a second list of my top five for like kind of more newer indie type of creators and stuff and you know people like james stokoe would be in that realm and corey um corey lewis and and there's like a million even even like jim rugg and and um ed piscor would you know maybe not make the top five but definitely be one of the top influences of newer you know artists i guess um so yeah i don't know and there's so many more and and i could if i if i could like actually pronounce like some of the mangaka <laughs> a bunch of them would be in there too you know for sure uh so but usually <laughs> I mean, even Junji Ito is is not the easiest for my American English tongue. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, at least it's 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 possible. It's possible to say that their name. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so uh, you know, that's kind of I'm thinking like, oh, I can I can do it like. And, and I'm again, I'm not, it's not my focus to stand out exactly, but I felt like that would be the most applicable thing to kind of talk about relating to what I'm saying um, for, for you guys and, and gals out there who, who might be thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, influences is, is something interesting. And, and to be honest, there isn't a lot of people doing the kind of thing that like Bill Sienkiewicz does and, um, you know, uh, Sam Keith does. So there actually is a little room for me in that kind of realm of things. You know, there is other plenty of other people, but I don't know. There, there's, there might be a little spot there for me. I don't know, <laughs> but either way, that's the, what I'm kind of influenced by. And, and when it really comes down to, cause I'm not going to be exactly like either of those people or anyone else. That's why I said, injecting yourself into your comic. Like what is the thing that really, what is like the kind of odd thing that, that you tend to go to? And that's another thing too, is like, I guess another point is like, what are you, what do you naturally, um, kind of prone to do like so i don't really know when i envision the comics i want to make i don't know if i envision a lot of observational drawing like i get caught up in the details sometimes and it's it's hard to do more realism i can do it as just practicing observational drawing i can do realism but like to to make it up out of my head and do it it turns out to not look so great usually um so but the thing is is that's what i'm 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 more likely to when i sit down with my sketchbook i feel much more comfortable taking a comic book or looking at something a still life thing or whatever and um i'm much more likely to just sit there and draw something i see um that's that's easier for me, you know, than trying to come up with my own thing. Every time, more often than not, when I do sit down and try to just like draw from imagination and come up with something, uh, I just, I just make something that I'm not, I don't like. <laughs> and, and so I can do that, but I have to kind of come at it with an idea already. I already have an idea, you know, or something. And, 
and so then I'll do like some character design or something. So, um, you know, but yeah, like what comes natural to me is to just sit down and, and find something to draw from, you know, and do that. So, um, you know, so maybe I should lean into that, even if it's not what I envision myself, the kind of thing I envision myself doing. Well, what can I say? What's going to come is going to come. You know, if I've, if that's what I do, that's what I do, you know? <laughs> so, um, it is what it is. And, and I can still build other skills, you know, anyways, I can, I can build the skill of drawing from imagination more and, and things will evolve. My style will evolve and stuff. But again, it's, it's that kind of that thought of expression and slowing things down and stuff and just taking the time to put yourself in there. And, um, so one thing that I, I, I think is going to be helpful for me, like, and, and may be helpful for you guys um, if you're struggling in this area in any way. And let me know if, if any of this relates to you. Um, is kind of, again, I, I've mentioned it a few times, is, is kind of slowing down and not uh, it, that pressure. Having that pressure just really messes things up sometimes. And so the slowing down idea... Um, it's like, so I, I look back, you know, while I'm thinking about this, I'm, I'm thinking about, well, what comics have I done? What have I done so far? And, you know, kind of where have I done well and where have I kind of not done so well? Where, where, where do I want to improve? Things like that. And uh, so one of the things I, I think about is like, well, I've, um, again, I've rushed things a lot for trying to, um, and, and I've preached this, like, you know, quant quantity over quality. That's something that I've been very much, I, I like that idea. I still like that idea, actually, in a lot of ways. But I don't know that it has really served me as well as I, it, 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 it has served me well. It's absolutely served me well, that, that idea, but I'm just in a different phase of my life now where I, I want to focus on making a better comic and stuff like that. So, and I want to inject more of myself into it. I want to bring whatever it is, the expression that comes through me, you know, or that, that, that I'm naturally prone to whatever, you know, the gift that God has given me, I want, I want it to flourish in a better, like, I don't know, way that that's, that's like really putting forth my passion, I guess. And, and so again, like I, I almost feel like when I look back at what I've done with comics and this again, hopefully is helpful to you guys. Um, if you're in a similar situation, um, I, I see that I'm, I've, uh, I feel like the comics I've made are more like thumbnails almost like they're, they're still like, they were good for what they were when I did them for sure. Like it is what it is. Like I'm not, trying to say I, my stuff sucked or anything. Well, it, it's, it, it's at a certain level. It's, it isn't great. That's for sure. But it's, it's okay. Like whatever it was, it was serviceable. I feel like it was like serviceable comics, you know? Um, and, and I focus more on telling the story clearly. And honestly, that's probably what you should focus more on when you're doing your first comics. Anyways, cl clarity is, is king. Clarity is more important than making flashy images and stuff like that um, when you're trying to tell a good story. So, you know, I'm not saying I did anything wrong necessarily, but now I want to put like some energy into really making it the way I I would more envision it, the, the ways that I, I desire, like I have a desire to do more, you know. So 
that means like taking my time. So I feel like where my comics ended, they shouldn't end anymore as far as like um, in my process, like um, they should, I should take it another, I should give it another pass or another couple passes before I'm like, okay, now this is the finished comic, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm more ready to do that now. I have more patience to do that kind of thing now. I don't have pressure on me to try to get something done like I used to feel. Now it's more like I'll get something good out there, you know, that I really feel proud of and stuff. And I do feel proud of the old stuff too, but it's just a different phase. So, um, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to like, say I get to the point of like, I've made, you know, some really good thumbnails that, that get like the clarity of the story down. And then now I want to say, okay, now it's time for me to almost like stylize this or like, let's like, for me, once I get like the storytelling bit down, I kind of stop there generally. And, and I don't think, well, is there like, let's try like three other ways that might be better to tell the story or, or a more interesting way to tell, like, it's kind of like the, the idea of like doing like, say talking head scene scenes, as they say, well, those, those can actually be very exciting scenes. Um, you know, visually, if you take the time to like really like crop crop the the view in different ways and and just play with the composition, play with uh, different kinds of contrast, with scale, with with um, so many different things, perspective. There's so many different ways that you can make a scene that's just people talking into something exciting and really. Um, emphasize the drama of whatever situation is going on you know in that that scene and also in the writing too i want to spend more time like if i do write my own stuff i mean i'm curious to try to work with some writers actually i in some ways i'm more of an artist than a writer so you know <laughs> any good writers out there i, I may be interested <laughs> in working on a project um, but that being said, of course, I only have so much time and, and I can't like do this kind of pressure thing. It needs to be a thing where it's like, OK, we both really enjoy the subject matter. And this person, you know, can write a decent comic, too, you know, and so it wouldn't be like just any any anything, you know, <laughs> and I want to learn how to write some decent comics, too. And I have a that's a big part of what I have a desire to do as well um in comics is make better stories because i feel like a lot of times the comics i leave comics out reading i've read comics and i leave kind of unsatisfied and i don't as much with with manga <laughs> i feel like manga hits the mark more than than um, american comics do often you know more more often than not um but, you know, manga doesn't always hit it out of the park either. So, um, so anyways, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I just want to take more time, you know, to, to kind of really give it even more, you know, and I feel like it's worth it. And, and again, like comics, nobody's going to get, you. It, it's, if you're if you were to get rich from comics <laughs> you know you're you're one of the very few <laughs> the very few like i can probably count <laughs> on one hand or maybe two the people who have gotten rich from comics if i if i think about it like <laughs> so it's and and can now the people who've made a career you know I might need some more hands for that, but even that is, is not super typical. I'm not saying it's not possible. I think it's actually very possible to make a good living from comics. Um, I think a lot of us don't, we, I think we um, miss a lot of the, some, some things about business and marketing that 
we should pay more attention to and we'd do better, you know, in a lot of things. But that being said, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, you know, tonight is, um, you know, injecting yourself into your comics. Like, take the time to really, like, okay, what is it that I'm, like, <sighs> that I, I'm more prone to? What is it? What what do I, like, if you think, like, there's something, like, man, I really like this weird thing, like, that, you know, people in comics don't really do this. Like, maybe graffiti art or something. Like, that's something that some people have done, but it's not a, a super common thing. Um, only Only a few people have really leaned into that side of things. Um, that's a place, another place where even I could possibly stand out a little bit. Not that I'm even good at that or spent a lot of time doing like graffiti type art, but it's definitely been a a big part of my influence as well, being into hip hop and stuff and, and all that. So, um, you know, whatever it is, like, if you're into crafting or like knitting, like maybe there's some way you can like bring that in, like whatever, like there's so much opportunity out there. And another big thing where there's a lot of opportunity is literally just learning how taking the time to learn how to write and write a good story. Because a lot of people, um, very, there's so many comics out there in in, in the tradition of, of comics is kind of not, the most sophisticated storytelling um you know just your odd tv show often has better storytelling than like most comics out there um now of course there are exceptions to that there's definitely exceptions to that um but all i'm saying is it doesn't take much of like really learning the craft of writing to stand out in the world of comics, you know, um, if you can just write a good story, you'll already be ahead of like the game, I feel like. Um, and so I want to learn, I, I've been trying to learn about that for a very long time, you know, um, and I still have a long way to go, but I want to learn how to write stories that are better than, than, um, what I've written so far. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's, that's when it comes down to it, that's what this is, right? Comics are stories after all. Um, so, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on how the perspective works on this particular face. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, and when it comes to writing, I've said this many times too before, but this is a new thing, a relatively new thing that I learned was like, write what you know. And and I know that's like super common advice, but I never understood it until recently. And, And what that means, in my opinion, is write what you know emotionally. It's not like, obviously, you know, none of us have gone to Mars, but I just saw the the Martian for the first time and it was really good, you know, and, uh, you know, some people wrote, whoever wrote that had some experiences emotionally that they could relate to and, and kind of create, you know, this situation from what they do know, you know, they don't know what it's like to be in Mars, but they might know stuff about science. They know you know, emotionally what it's like to maybe be isolated or something or feel like you're isolated or something like that. Um, so these are, these are the type of things. Um, so writing what you know is huge. So that's, that's just one little, my one little tip for writing, but I'm, I'm still learning that myself to be honest. So I might try to ink, ink these too. That way you guys can see them a little better. I don't know that I'd be good at inking them because they're more like precise type lines, but I don't have to ink them the way the that the actual artist did, Jinji Ito. So, anyways, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna check out the chat and see see what you guys are thinking about this topic and whatever else. If if you have anything else you want to chat about, I'll probably be hanging out for a little bit longer, and 
you know, we can, uh, we can do that. So let's see, let's see, let's see, where did I leave off? Yeah, I think I saw that one. Drew said, thank you, Marsh. I can always use prayers. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, I think we all can. Let's, <laughs> everybody who prays, let's pray for each other, right? That's for sure. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What else? Is glyph still going to be a thing sometime in the future? Eh, it's it's something that I'm always like not sure about. <laughs> I've never been able to find. I have I have to find glyph soul. If I can ever find glyph soul, then I'll write a story about. Or if I can have somebody else. If somebody else wants to take, you know, their swing at glyph, you know, I can, I, I have a lot I can tell you, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I've, I've had other people take a swing at glyph too before. And, um, but I have either not gotten a full script or it wasn't meant, it was just meant to be like a fun exercise for them or something. So, you know, I'm open to, to, to glyph i just don't know i don't know for sure if if that's gonna be a thing again <laughs> but we'll see we'll see uh, let's see yes well played about the invisible woman thing <laughs> uh, i thought injecting yourself into comics was going to be about how to write a self insert in your comics oh yeah i i kind of did that on purpose with the with the thumbnail <laughs> because <laughs> i did i mean that's what <laughs> and it, it was it just was a convenient thing like i used this imagery you know of me drawing me in this comic um for um inserting injecting yourself into comics so you know that was kind of a deliberate like pun or something or just goofy thing so you know and that's also a fun thing too. I mean, talk about write what you know, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's where it's at. So, um, and, and, you know, you know, the, um, what do they call it? Um, oh, what's the, the term for it? You know, I'll use like a, a different brush. I'll use like a brush so I don't have to be so precise <laughs> with this inking stuff. A sort of brush my favorite this is like my favorite tool if you guys don't know for inking i love this thing the tombow furunasaki brush pen but it's got like this like it's it's sort of not a brush and it's sort of not a pen you know it, it's got a flexible tip and uh i know a lot of other people really like it too i don't think it's archival yeah it's water-based unfortunately but yeah whatever I'm not going to be pouring any water onto it or <laughs> anything. So whatever. I like it. I just like how it feels. So, um, so yeah, what was I talking about? <laughs> um, uh, there was the comment. Oh yeah. We talked about that. Um, Crap, I can't remember exactly what I was saying. I had a point there for a second. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anyways, yeah. What are you guys up to, too? I'm curious, like, uh, you got any, like, specific projects you're doing or anything? Um, coming up with uh, learning, learning anything new, like, that... Uh, has been helpful for your creative process or anything, all that stuff I'm interested in. Um, let's see. Oh, I know there was something else I was talking about for a second there, but uh, whatever. Sam Keith is awesome. His Wolverine and the Max are top notch. Yeah, I love especially the Wolverine. I've done uh, more than a few um, kind of trying to copy his like like nods to his style and, and stuff for like kind of covers and stuff i've done i shouldn't say more than a few i've done a couple <laughs> but uh yeah i love his stuff i've loved it for a long time since the marvel marvel um the um 
Marvel Comics presents Wolverine stuff. You know, I love those covers. Oh my gosh. And the ones with Ghost Rider on them too and Cable and, and all that. Like there's a couple with Doctor Strange on them. Like anytime I see those like in in the comic book bins, a lot of times I'll get them even though I already have like multiple copies of all of them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just I love them. As long as they're kind of cheap. I don't know if you guys have that, like, certain books or comic books or something that sometimes you buy more than once. Um, I kind of do that with Kirby comics, too. But that's mostly because I can't remember if I have a specific one or not sometimes. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love I love Sam Keith. I love me some Sam Keith. I'll have to watch the rest later tonight. It's been great seeing you back live streaming again later, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for um, dropping in, Drew. Um, and uh, so let's see. What is today? Today's Tuesday, right? Tuesday's kind of a nice day to do streams. I don't know. I might have to come up with a schedule. <laughs> um And I'll, I'll probably be doing like the edited videos and stuff too sometimes, but... I, I can't promise anything right now exactly, but I do want to do, I think I'm going to shoot for doing a stream a week and maybe I can possibly, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to attempt doing two streams a week again. That was fun, but uh, I got, I did get burnt out on that. I didn't think I would. I thought I could do that and have no problem, but you know, I, I got to give it to you, Didi. Like <laughs> you are consistent with that and that is so cool and it's not easy <laughs> um but you know you kind of have a different a little bit of a different style of type of thing you know of how you do it so you can kind of work from some things i don't know it's it's i, do, I give it to you it's it's uh takes work effort uh take some um, good routine and habits i think to get to that but but i might be able to hack once a week <laughs> might be able to make that happen so we'll see man the tough thing with manga comics like trying to draw these manga characters is they don't have like a lot of lines on the faces like you got to get it right and i know i know for sure i'm going to mess these up especially girls oh my gosh very tough to do in my opinion but it's all it's tough to do until you learn how to do it you know <laughs> so that's what observational drawing is for partially um so yeah i will check more of the comments in a sec um yeah and also like i don't know if i'm curious if you guys have checked out that like that apple vision thing that's kind of crazy right i almost feel a little creeped out by it <laughs> i'm creeped out by just internet and social media as it is like the world's going to some interesting places and yeah uh banks too there's a lot of crazy stuff in the world but we don't need to think about that there's so much stuff going on i don't pay attention to most of it but once in a while i hear things and i'm like oh yeah that sounds uh that sounds interesting that being said i also am into technology to a certain extent and i do actually think it's a cool thing like it's pretty darn amazing um what these these uh um glasses or goggles or whatever can do you know they can like track your eye movements and and stuff and and uh you know they've been talking about doing this forever and and they finally got it put it out you know so that's interesting and you know they're only a, a measly i think four thousand dollars or something <laughs> So I don't know that they're going to become super common anytime soon, but I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next five years they'll be 
they'll get cheaper and there'll be other companies doing their versions and and probably i don't know if any companies i think i mean vr's already been like a thing and i know this isn't like a tech channel but it's just something interesting that's kind of happened recently so yeah i'm curious what you guys think i wonder what it'll do for comics like like what's webtoons gonna look like on on vr glasses probably pretty darn cool like is there gonna be a new format from this for comics probably you know that could be interesting i mean i like the traditional stuff i'll always probably prefer that but you know cool stuff cool stuff and sometimes kind of creepy stuff <laughs> uh let's see dd said she's he heading out thank you for the super chat Heading out to the garden. Great to see you streaming again, Marsh. Thank you for coming by. It's very awesome to see you here. And thank you again for the super chat. I think that's what it is, or a sticker, or, you know. <laughs> um, the idea that comes from the mind can really inspire you. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is, like, I don't know, like, just you know, imagination, of course, and, and what sparks your imagination, you know, is interesting. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward, like I said, to, you know, injecting more of my stuff that, that I'm like, makes things a little bit unique for me, I guess. And, and, you know, everybody's going to have that really there's no way you can't have that there's things that you've kind of experienced that you know other people haven't and uh and just maybe there's that but there's also just different you know everybody's got their own view on things and and um also like different influences and stuff i don't know there's there's a lot that we can bring to the table we can all bring something new to the table and trying to understand what that is you know is not always easy and and not not always something we lean into sometimes we kind of lean into um well what's everybody else doing you know and and we lose sight of you know the fact that we actually have our own thing that we can bring and and, it, and i don't know yeah i don't i think uh i'm just thinking harder about that stuff personally so yeah i don't know um let's see what else what else does everybody have to say here sideburns how you doing man i showed off uh this for a little bit here sideburns did this cover and did a comic in this so that's really cool um so yeah what is up sir hope you're doing well i i always see updates from you when i check instagram um so i'm sure you are kicking butt out there making your comics you're working on some poses at the moment. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Um, man, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing, I guess, here, huh? <laughs> to a certain degree. Um, so that's that's cool. It's always good to, I feel like observational drawing is, is, I don't know, I love observational drawing. I love, you know, trying to learn how the body works and doing like gesture drawings and and uh, all that kind of stuff i mean and there's been there was a time where you know it was more like drudgery because it's like i know i need to do that to get better but i really i don't have a lot of time and i want to make comics and and all that kind of thing whereas if i had taken the time i would have been a much better artist by now and been able to do comics maybe quicker and stuff so it really is worth it, you know, to sharpen the axe, as they say, you know. 
Um, I think that's actually scripture in Proverbs too, you know, sharpen the ax and it'll help you cut down the tree if you take the time, you know, to, to do that. So, um, that's another thing I've been doing is chopping wood lately. <laughs> I t I joke with, with Magda, like we have like that old song, like, um, se semi-charm kind of life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we got that semi -char semi farm kind of life, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> uh, so we got the chickens going now, and I'm chopping wood, and <laughs> it's not all the way farm, but it's semi semi farm. <laughs> so, yeah, good stuff. Um, and I I really enjoy doing work outside and being in nature, you know, observing, observing God's nature is pretty freaking amazing. That's for sure. Um, whether you believe in God or not, I think it's pretty darn amazing. And I feel like it's, you know, even enhanced in my opinion, when you think of the creator and you're, you're into that too. That's definitely for me an enhancement at least. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? I'm not looking at the picture now, so I'm kind of drawing these. I might be doing this kind of wrong, <laughs> like the extra lines and stuff. And, and I'm trying to like go with what I know about like shadow and, and things like that. But, um, you know, I, it's hard to draw girls, but I think I kind of got the gesture down a little bit. <laughs> hard to draw girls for me. Some people have a harder time with drawing dudes. And I, I don't have the easiest time with them either necessarily, but, <laughs> But it's all practice. I enjoy just putting down the lines, you know. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, sideburns, I've been working on the new pages for Duckling Star. Awesome. I knew it. I knew you were working on something good. Uh, let's see. No projects, lots of work, and procrastinating. <laughs> I think we all do our share of procrastinating. Even those of us who, well, I shouldn't say those of us because <laughs> I don't know, but like even those people who seem to be very prolific, even they have a level of procrastination, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Ralph says, I've been transferring my Instagram art posts to my art blog. A lot of work. Oh, that's interesting. That's really cool. What's your, um, do you have like a name of your website or something? Um, that's something that another thing that a lot of people neglect these days is websites, newsletters, and, um, you know, blogs and stuff. And they shouldn't because there's actually a lot that can be done with that. Um, it's, uh, it's actually sometimes more effective than the social media stuff. I feel like from what I've learned um, and I, I'd like to get back on doing my blog and stuff eventually and, and get the newsletter going better. I've, I've I keep trying <laughs> somehow, some way I never end up being consistent with the newsletter. So, um, but you know, maybe one day we'll get there. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not going to put the pressure on myself anymore with that kind of stuff. So, but I definitely applaud those who are trying to make it work because, um, yeah, blogs are, are great actually, because they really can, um, drive the search engines to get some attention for your work and stuff. So. And then you can get people signed up to your newsletter. And newsletters are very powerful, sometimes more powerful than even things like YouTube and stuff, you know. So don't sleep on, on those efforts, I would say. Um, 
Let's see. For sure, first, second, third prints and newsstands. Hmm. I'm not sure what that's in response to. Um, but hey, cool. I like those things. <laughs> Any day is good. Yeah. Oh, for like um when I do the the videos. Yeah, that's true, I'm sure. But I guess really what I need to try to think of is what day is good for me. But for me now, like I, at the moment, I'm very flexible. You know, when I get a job, and that'll be a whole different story. I don't know what my schedule will end up being. Um, but yeah, Nathan, I got a cover that I'm starting sketches for. Okay. That's awesome. I'm, I would love to see it. <laughs> um, but I know that you do a lot of work that ends up being in NDA. So, um, at least for a time, but that's cool, man. I love your work, man. <laughs> And I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And you're somebody who does take the time to figure out your, um, you know, your layouts and stuff and, and how it's going to come down. And, and you always come up with something really cool, in my opinion. <laughs> so, yeah, Nathan's stuff is just rocks. Um, now I have to check out the Apple thing. Yeah, it's it's. It's worth it to just, I, I think it's definitely going to be part of our future, probably a really big part and probably going to add to the, you know, people not paying attention to people and <laughs> looking at their phones. Now they will just be staring off into space or people will think they're sp staring off into space. And uh, yeah, but the technology is pretty darn cool. Like they do try to make it so that um, you can still interact with people even though you have things going on before your eyes <laughs> it is pretty darn impressive let's see sideburns i get the ma manga comments it's strength can lie in the balance of simplicity and detail yeah very true like <clears throat> i love i do love that about manga as well you know and in some ways I would like to bring a little bit of that manga influence in, you know, for myself. Not, I don't want to look like a manga artist. I don't want my art to necessarily look like that. And there's nothing wrong with if it did. If it turned into that, I'd be okay with that. But, um, well, to a certain extent, but it's not, I just don't think that's ever where my art will necessarily naturally go. Um, quite that far but there's definitely i there's definitely some things that i feel like i can learn from manga and apply to my art you know um things with storytelling and and yeah that the detail um mixed with the simplicity that's that's a that's something i've always been interested in actually even when i wasn't so into manga and and they do do it well um generally you know um so yeah i think uh copying from manga as i'm doing right now <laughs> isn't the worst thing in the world to learn from that kind of material for sure so there's a lot to learn, that's for sure. Let's see. Uh, Obrock says, I just finished the comic book script, currently thumbnailing it with my trashy art. Hey, that's the only kind of art I have, <laughs> personally. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, there is a part of me that's like it's not the greatest, but, you know. I'm doing what I can. Then hopefully we'll get a cartoonist to draw it for me once I save up enough to properly pay them. Oh, okay, cool. That's a great way to go. I'd love to write. Like if I can get to the point where I'm like really writing stories that I, I, I think are really good. Um, I mean, I already have. I have a comic right now that I just need to letter um, that 
I had my friend Teresa draw and it's a romance story. So all I need to do is letter it and then I can get, send it out to you guys, you know, publish it somewhere. Um, so there's that. And, uh, you know, I am definitely open to doing that kind of thing because sometimes, sometimes you're not the right artist necessarily. Like if you are an artist, sometimes you're not necessarily the right artist for something you might write, you know, if you do both. So, and, and it would be nice to have some of my work in that focuses more on the writing and some of my work that focuses more on the art, you know? So what's up skull diamond 94 hello everyone <laughs> thanks for coming by adam how you doing man good to see you john thanks yeah yeah i'm doing some john man um thanks for coming by let's see what else what else what else really digging the drawings today thanks i appreciate that what manga am i manga am i referencing I just got my first Jinji Ito book. So it's this one. Shiver. And it's an anthology of like nine different stories. Um, horror based stories. That's what Jinji Ito does. And I'm just drawing various characters from various stories. I've only read one, the first story so far. And a half of the second story, which the second story is the title story, the, the shiver story. So, um, so yeah. And the first story was pretty interesting um, about a record that somebody found and like a, like a vinyl record and uh, you know, some crazy things happen these people treat this record like, you know, kind of like um, how the ring is treated in in the hob in in um, Lord of the Rings. You know, it's it's like people get obsessed over it that they would rather, like, they would die die to keep the record, like, literally die to be able to keep hold of the record. Like, it's it gets kind of kind of crazy for sure. I mean, that's you know horror for you. <laughs> so you know pretty cool idea um and the cool thing about this book is um throughout it there's like little bits of like sketches that junji ito shows of like the process and and a little just not a lot but just a little bit of commentary background commentary of you know what the, each particular story was like inspired by or something you know so that's really cool um, I always like that kind of stuff too. So, I I really still suck at drawing hair too. <laughs> Luckily, the way Junji Ito drew this hair is mostly just straight up black, and <laughs> I'm not doing it as good as they they do it. But um, you know, it is what it is. So let's see. What else? What else? <clears throat> Duo tone in manga is pretty sweet. Yeah, I agree. And I love I love that technique. And I have some plans to do some creative things with that myself. I haven't actually I have some some um well not duo tone because technically it's just it's a it's screen like the typical screen tones you can get and i still have yet to use them because i'm like afraid to use them for some reason one of these days i'll i'll take the plunge and and then i'll it'll be like no turning back and i'll be using it like too much probably but i've done i've used that effect in like digital drawings and stuff i haven't read shiver yet but i do like everything i have read so far from junji junji ito, ito. yeah and <clears throat> That's awesome, Nathan. I think you and I talked about that actually when we hung out. Uh, <clears throat> and that's, you know, I, I'm finally, finally bought, bought, you know, this one. This is the first one that I bought. Um, and that was this weekend I bought it. 
So I'm enjoying it so far. And the next one I'll probably get is the spiral one. That one, for some reason, it's always intrigued me. Every time I see images from it and just like the idea that I've read from like the blurb on the back of the cover, like it just, I think that I'm really going to dig that one. So I'm going to, that'll probably be my next purchase of Junji Ito. And I'm curious about many of the stuff that they have made. Um, but, you know, those, I figured I'd start with this one because you know, I'll get a good taste of different short stories and, and I dig, you know, anthology type stuff and short story type stuff anyways. And I like to learn from that, um, as well. So I figured it'd give me like a good flavor of, of what's going on, um, with what Junjay Ito does, but also, you know, I kind of knew already that I'm probably going to, the spiral one next <laughs> so we shall see and i've heard it's really good so yeah that's really neat um and you know it's funny like this kind of normal everyday type of characters that i'm drawing from this right now isn't the stuff i love you know from from their artwork but I like the the horror stuff like you know the gross stuff <laughs> but uh there's actually not a lot of that in this particular book like it's there you know here and there but um i expected there to be maybe more but it's but that's all right it's all about the story you know i'm sure and I already was creeped out by the first story, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to being creeped out some more. I'm already creeped out by the second, the, sh the Shiver story, too. That one's interesting. Um, about people who have holes, like they have this disease and they have holes in their body. And, you know, the wind goes through their body, so that's why they're, they're always cold. They're shivering, you know. And, you know, I'm... I don't know what else it entails because I'm only halfway through it, but that's like the beginning part. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, I'm not in the next nine volt anthology, but I do have a coffee account, which is like Patreon where I post stuff from my comic. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, that's awesome. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. And, uh, you know, you've been in, I don't know if, have you been in like all the <laughs> nine volt and thought you've been in a lot of them, I think. Right. Um, that's a good Edo volume and I like Gaio. Okay, cool. And that's, I, I'm curious about all the stories, um, so far and yeah, Uza, Uzumaki, um, is one that I hear is really good too. Yeah. Um, like Nathan is saying, they say that is her best work. Yeah. That would probably, that might be like the one I go for after shiver after, um, the spiral one or who knows, maybe I'll skip spot. I'll, I'll do the spiral after I do Uzumaki, but I, I really want to check out the spiral one just even for the art. And Ralph says that's good as well. So that's, that's awesome. Um, Gaio is the next one you want to read. Okay, cool. What's up, Dale? Thanks for coming by. Oh, behind the scenes. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> tra tra tripophobia is played up heavily in Shiver from what I've seen. Tripophobia. Okay, I'm not sure what tripophobia is. Let's look it up somebody you'll probably end up oh okay you already got it here F fear of holes okay <laughs> that's kind of funny fear of holes like i didn't know that was a thing but hey apparently it is <laughs> so let's see i've been going for almost two hours here i guess i'll kind of show this up close you know so you guys can see it I am going to get some dinner here soon. So, you know, not the greatest <laughs> drawings, but 
it's practice, you know. <laughs> I think I, I caught the gesture a bit and the, the mood a little bit, so that's nice. And then this one's just, again, the sketch of this boy, and he's angry and shouting, kind of typical manga, you know, thing. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I've been doing as I've been chatting with you guys. So, yes. Um Lotus pod hands. <laughs> Marsh, can I send you one of my comic books? You absolutely can. Sure. Um, message me because I do have a P.O. box down there, but I, I'll be honest, I don't even know if it still exists because I haven't been there in like six months or so. <laughs> so uh, send me a message. If you can, if you go on Instagram, you could Marsh makes comics on Instagram. You could send me a message there or you can email me um, at Marsh makes art at gmail.com and I can send you an address and yeah, I'll check it out. I'd be love to check out a comic um, for sure. Uh, Adam says, looks good. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, sideburns i've seen across the spider-verse and agree with your views on it hey okay good i'm not the only one who hated those three words <laughs> oh gosh um but i do think it was really good i'm just i left the theater disappointed <laughs> and and i don't want to go into much more than that i don't want to spoil anything for anybody um so we'll see we'll see how it all ends up turning out in the in the end um so yeah cool all right so guys it's been great like hanging out with you guys guys and gals thank you for hanging out with me um i i do think i'm gonna be doing these uh once a week whether they're live streams or recorded videos or whatever I think I'm going to get back to once a week and I'm not trying to do any more than once a week um, because I just don't, I don't trust myself to be consistent with any more than once a week. So I know I can do once a week though. I've done much more than that in the past, but uh, you know, for now, I think I'm going to just stick to once a week. I don't know which day specifically, maybe I'll shoot for Tuesday again in a similar time, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, it's been really great catching up with you guys and, uh, I hope you guys have a great week, um, coming up and weekend, stay safe, keep making some awesome comics and, uh, I'll be seeing you in the future. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>